first step in the process simply involves scanning a batch of documents. So I've gone ahead and done that. I've scanned 21 pages and within this batch you will see we have documents related to an insurance claim as well as documents related to a new insurance policy that's being applied for by an individual. Once this step is complete and the batch is released to the next step in the process, the documents are going to be automatically classified and the data is going to be extracted. Once the documents have been classified and the data is extracted, there may be some data that requires a human operator to validate. So let's now take a look at the new Captiva desktop that handles this part of the process flow. Now using the new Captiva desktop, we are going to go into the batch that we just scanned so that we can validate the fields that were flagged because data was either read at a low confidence or did not pass a rule that was set up. So a couple things I want to point out in the new Captiva desktop. On the left side is a list of the particular document we're working. In this case, it's a one-page document. Um, I can easily expand this so it actually gives me a list of the pages that contain within this document. Up top is the full image that we're looking at and then the highlighted yellow part of the document or page indicates the, um, the field that we're currently working. And then down below is the data entry form. So we have the different fields that we're, we're extracting data for and you can see where the data has been automatically extracted. Another important thing is, is the image snippet that you can see. So um, as I move through these fields and perform validations, I don't have to shift my eyes up to look at the actual full image to get the, the, the snippet of just the image, part of the image that is relevant to the field that I'm working. So for the policy number, it's just simply flagging it because it's, it's set as an always review field. So the operator would simply hit enter, move to the next field. Now we need the policy holder Na uh, name. So here it's Randy Marshall. I could type it or I could rubber band it. So here we rubber band it performed OCR. Again there shows the snippet. And once I hit enter it auto populates, does a database lookup and populates the, the address information. Next field set to always review. So I hit enter. Finish this task and it takes me to the next task. So again, I have um, the policy number field set up to review. I hit enter, policy holder. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and type in the first name Verna. Hit enter. That pops up a dialog with a list of, of names I can choose from. There's a couple different Vernas in our database, so I'll select the appropriate one. And as soon as I do that, it then goes and pre-populates the, the other fields associated with the address. Then I'm going to make a quick correction here. One last one. And we're done. We hit finish. We go to the next task. So very quick. On this particular document, what we have is a, a rule that was set up that's saying that the name on the application form is different than the name on the medical exam document. So this is requiring the operator to make the appropriate correction. Um, in some cases, if they're not able to make the correction, or there's not enough information to make the, the, the decision, you can add a flag. So, for example, if the information is not in the system or it's unreadable, um, these are all customizable. So they could click on a specific uh, reason, and what that would actually do is route this document to another queue where additional follow-up or, or review could be performed. But in this case, what we want to do is just make a, a, the correction. So we'll fix that name. Come down here. Correct that, and now it's reconciled. So we'll hit Finish Current Task and move to the next task. Again, we have a couple fields that simply have to be confirmed. Before I go to this, I, one of the things I want to point out is you'll see here we've extracted several rows of data from this table. This is one of the powerful uh, capabilities of, of Captiva, not only to be able to extract data from, say, a specific zone, but in this case taking and looking at a table and being able to extract uh, a lot of information and perform validation, so saving a tremendous amount of time and not having to manually key this information in. So I'll go ahead and hit Enter finish this task, 
and go to my final task. This particular uh, document, again, is being um, passed to an operator for review because the, the name on the application does not exist or does not compare or is not consistent with the name on the medical exam document. Uh, what is slightly different than what I showed you earlier is that you'll notice we're not looking at the, the, the image in question. We're only showing the snippet of the image on each, on each uh, document. And the benefit of this is, is that you're allowing the operator to focus on the specific task at hand, so not getting, uh, looking at other information that is not necessary to make the, the, the decision or the correction here. But also, it's hiding the, the full image, which in some cases may be important. There might be other confidential information that's contained within a document that you don't want your operators looking at. So in this case, we're simply looking at just the snippet of the image associated with each, uh, each document. So I'll make the correction there to that one. And once I do that, you can see it removes the flag. And we hit Finish. And we are now done with processing that particular batch. So now that the documents have been classified and the data extracted um, and reviewed, one of the last things I want to show you in this demonstration is how easy it is to set up a capture flow process uh, using the, the new Captiva designer in Captiva 7. So let's take a look at that. We are now looking at the new Captiva 7 designer. In the new designer, everything you need to develop a capture process, including setting up the system, preparing profiles, and defining your capture flow process, is all included in a new unified design environment. The designer makes it much easier to develop a process, including building what we call profiles for configuring settings like document types. In this case, I have several different document types already defined that are reusable across any number of processes. For example, the life insurance document type shows you the fields that are defined. When I click on form, you see how we have control over the layout of the data entry form that operators work with. You can easily customize the look and feel of this form to get the best performance from your operators. You can also easily define business rules using simple expressions, database queries, or even writing custom scripts. Again, this profile is designed once and reusable for any number of processes. Plus, if you make any changes to the profile, all you have to do is upload the change to the server and immediately takes reflex in any process that relies on the profile. Once done with the setup of my process flow and configuration, deployment is simple. I can easily deploy them to the server with a single click of the button. Furthermore, moving the setup and configuration between servers is just a matter of pointing to a different server. For example, if you have a test system, a development system, and a production system. There you have it, a short demonstration on Captiva 7, which shows how this release significantly simplifies the development and deployment of enterprise capture projects while delivering superior accuracy and operator performance. Interested in what Queso can do for you? Subscribe to our channel now and check out these videos.